So this is a standing stone that Sam found and brought us to. And I'm just kind of like dissecting what we're looking at here. Um, obviously as a standing stone, it, it's something that we want to investigate, right? So Sam found it, brought us here. Derek took out his compass and found that when we look at it this way, it's almost perfectly on an east-west line. It's off a little bit, but his compass is set to magnetic and we know magnetic changes over time. So that in theory could account for the difference, the small difference that we see. However, I'm looking at it from a different angle. I'm looking at it from, this would have been turned up by a tree and it would have been a really, really big tree to turn this up if this was caught up in the root system. But that's what I think happened and here's why. If we look down here, there's nothing there, it's, it's empty. This corner here, Looks like it fits in there. Okay, and if we step back and take a full look, we've got some like outcrop here where the stone is layered and broken underneath. And if there was a tree on top of that that fell that way, would have taken it with it. Okay, there's nothing on this side because there wouldn't have been anything underneath the stone here. There wouldn't have been enough earth. But when we look at it from the other side, we see this pile of dirt and a small stone. Don't think it would have been set there on purpose, but we definitely have some earth back here piled up behind it. And then the opposite on this side, nothing. Okay, so it looks like it came out of this area and was probably overturned by a tree, right? But let's keep investigating. So one of the things we talked about was the kinds of lichen that are on it, because lichen growth can tell age. We've got maybe five different kinds of lichen on it. <laughs> We've got this grayish stuff here. We've got the green here. We've got like a leafy green here, which is kind of the same here. Okay. Got this small, which is probably like younger versions of this. All right. Down here, we've got like a blackish color. Okay. And then over here, we've got a lot of gray pock marks, a lot of small. All right, leafy green, okay, gray stuff, all right. Now this, having been the bottom of the stone, uh, you know, touching the ground, wouldn't have had anything on it, okay. So let's look at some of the other stones around it. This one, which is directly next to it, has all like the leafy green. This one which was a little bit further away, has that leafy brown and black and the gray and the green, okay? Same thing with this one over here. It's got the gray and the green. And then further back on the stone, it's all moss and dirt. And that would have been the same on the other side of the stone. So let's go have a look at that again. Again, you know, lichen at the edge of the stone and then moss a little bit further back okay lichen on the edge of the stone and then moss a little further back and now when we go look at this what we see is kind of the same with a lot of lichen on the outside there and as we get a little bit further down it's a little bit clearer there's some gray stuff in here, but it's not the same growth like what we see here or over there. So the majority of this side of the stone 
was probably covered with earth and that earth now is down here with this okay and we've also got the moss growth there but that doesn't say much that doesn't mean it was up here this particular growth um, because let's take a look around right look at all the trees They're very very young trees okay maybe 25 30 years tops for some of these trees okay so this was probably logged at some point but also what's missing we don't have any remnants of a tree that would have been big enough to stand this up so what does that mean it means that the tree that was here that potentially was here that stood this up would have fallen over so long ago that it's had time to rot back into the ground completely because we see no trace of it whatsoever. I doubt very much that this was stood up by the hand of man. I doubt very much that it was moved by the hand of man simply for the fact that we've got one side where stuff is packed up on it and the other side isn't. Typically when we see standing stones, we see them locked in with other stones. Well, standing stones that were placed there by people, we'll see them locked in by other stones because the people would have known, oh, this is gonna fall over if we don't put some other stones around it so it doesn't fall, right? So anyway, That's my personal analysis. And if anybody has anything that, uh, you know, contradicts anything that I have to say, I'd like to hear it. So feel free to leave a comment below.